So when I find chuck roasts that look this good as a choice chuck roast, I mean the marbling on this is just really, really nice. I can't pass that up. And so I wasn't even planning to do a chuck roast video, but I'm doing a chuck roast video now because we're gonna take these, we're gonna smoke these up out on the pit barrel cooker, and we're gonna make some terrific barbecue beef sliders. So first, wanna get a good rub on these, and what I'm using today is Uncle Steve's Shake Competition Cow Powder. Got a nice flavor on it, and we've got pretty good surface moisture here, so we're not gonna use any binder. And I'm actually gonna be smoking these up tomorrow. I'm gonna let these soak in these flavors overnight in the refrigerator. I like to do that. You've seen me do it many times in videos. If you don't have the time to go overnight, try and give it at least three or four hours with this rub on it, or any rub. Get our sides. The very thick chuck roast, which I like when I can find these. Frequently though, I won't be able to find them this thick at just the supermarket. I got these at Costco. Costco generally has really good beef. They did have a couple prime chuck roasts, but honestly, the appearance of them compared to these was not that great in the marbling. And I figured why pay more when this marbling looks this good on here? I'm not doing any extra trimming on here, obviously. I've already started putting the rub on. Trimming was already pretty good on here. We're just gonna let that other fat render down as it smokes. Make sure everybody's got a good, good coating here. All right, these are looking good. These are gonna get covered loosely in plastic wrap and they're gonna go in the refrigerator overnight. And I'll see you tomorrow out at the pit barrel cooker. All right, the pit barrel's fired up. Let's get our chuck roasts on. So I'm using a couple chunks of post oak for smoke today. And I have a small water pan in there because it's pretty dry today but you'll also probably notice I didn't put a temperature probe in there. Now for ambient temperature, I rarely use one in the PVC because it usually runs around 275 to 300 just with the vent set for my proper elevation and the hanging rods in, they're part of the venting system. But I'm not using an internal temperature probe today because I'm using the new Thermapen 1. Now Thermaworks sent this to me a while back to test and review and they've sent me things over the years and I've purchased a lot from them too. They're a good company and I believe in supporting good companies. So I actually ordered one of these in a different color because I wanted that color. Now there've been other videos done recently about this and I'm not really doing this video about this. I'm showing you this because I'm gonna be using it in this cook today. I've tested over the last couple of weeks. It works great just like the original Thermopen Mark IV did. And there are certain things about it which are improved. There's one that I think is really, really important. I mean, first of all, you've got one second read time. You've got improved accuracy. You've got a brighter backlight. And those are all great. And they're improvements over the Thermopen Mark IV. The thing I really like about this goes along with the main thing I like about the Thermoworks products is they're made like tanks. This thing is solid. And what Thermoworks has done is increase the warranty from two years on the Thermopen Mark IV to five years on the Thermopen I. To me, that says a company is standing behind their product. And I think that's important. So that's why they've supported me and I've supported them by purchasing their products. So we're just rolling with the Thermopen 1 today. We'll put that one second read time to use today and check these every hour or so. Just get the lid off real quick, check the temperature and the tenderness, get the lid back on. And when we get to that stall range, we will wrap these. So I'll see you back here in about an hour when we check these chuck roasts. All right, we are at the two hour mark. I think I might've said we were gonna check it in one hour, but I really meant two hours. I like to wait about two hours when checking things on the pit barrel or any cooker really. Two hours is a good amount of time. So let's see how we're doing. Good amount of moisture in there. Let's do a temperature check with the Thermapen 1, see how we're doing. 
We are at 150-ish degrees on the big one. This one's a little smaller. Yeah, that one's 169. So I'm gonna let these go for probably, I'm gonna say another 30 minutes before we wrap them. I want that bigger one to get just a little more temperature in it. So I'll see you back here in 30 minutes. All right, we've been going a half hour more. I wanna take a quick temperature check now and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna wrap them. Now let's check our big one here. Yeah, that's showing 163, 164, and our little one's gonna be higher, I know that. Yeah, that's showing 178. So I wanna get these wrapped up because the big one, I'm pretty sure is gonna hit the stall if it hasn't already, and that way we can get these cooked a little bit quicker. Good color on the outside, I'm liking this. Let's get our lid back on. Now I want to add a little bit of moisture here. I never ended up needing to spritz here, so I'm going to use my spritzing liquid, which is 50% water, 50% apple cider vinegar. And I'm just going to add maybe, I don't know, half a cup here to the foil pan. Get a double layer of foil on here. We'll get this back on the pit barrel and let it finish up. Gonna take our water pan out of here now. Don't need that anymore. Now I'm not gonna check this for two hours. If I was doing this with a remote probe, I'd be able to see when it reaches that 200, 205 range when I wanna start checking for tenderness. But sometimes you don't have that but you really do need a good instant read thermometer. And that's why the Thermapen, I just love it. So in two hours, we'll peel back the foil, we'll take a temperature and a tenderness check. It's really about tenderness here. So I'll see you back here in a couple hours. All right, we are just a little past four and a half hours. Let's check our chuck roast for tenderness. Peel our foil back. I'm really just gonna be focusing on the larger chuck roast. Oh, that's looking good. Let's see our tenderness. Still a little bit of resistance. That temperature's showing 211 there. Yeah, the little one is very tender. Just got a little tiny bit of resistance here. But you know what? If it rests for two hours, which is what I plan, I think we're gonna be good. So I'm gonna rewrap that with some new foil on top, really seal it in tight. It's gonna go inside, it's gonna rest for two hours. So in a couple hours, I'll see you inside. We'll go ahead and we'll make some barbecue beef sandwiches. Here we go. This is the large chuck roast, and you can see when you do a chuck roast or a brisket or anything low and slow like that, it is going to shrink. This turned out looking great, love the color. I wasn't necessarily going for that super hard bark, but it did get a nice bark on it. Total cook time on this was a little over four and a half hours, which is fairly quick for a chuck roast. Usually I find they take more like the five to six hour range, but every cut of meat is different. Every cooker is different. Conditions are different. This one just took that long today. It's rested for two hours. Now let's cut into it. And I'm just gonna go straight across the middle here because we're gonna be making slices for these barbecue beef sliders. Oh, nice. Let's get some slices going here. Oh yeah. Let's turn it and cut some this way. Oh, that is looking good. We're going with the grain here. We want to go against the grain as much as possible, but you know what? It's very tender. It's all going to taste great. Yeah, that is tender. That is pull apart tender. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish slicing this up and then we're gonna build some of our barbecue beef sliders. So I have three little slider buns sitting out here and we're just gonna start building these barbecue beef sliders. Let's pile on some beef here. Get them as tall as you want. I'm not gonna judge. I'll join in. Let's take a quick little taste. People call chuck roast poor man's brisket. It's easy to see why, because you get that 
ultra beefy flavor like you would get in brisket, but in a smaller and often more economical cut. Now I want to get some barbecue sauce on these because these are barbecue beef sandwiches. And I'm just using a whiskey barbecue sauce here. And if some of it spills out off the bun, I'm not worried about it. If you want to, you could take this and dip it in the barbecue sauce first before you put it on your bun, but this works good for me this time. I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way, as long as it tastes good and you enjoy it. Let's get some red onion on here for some freshness, a little bit of crispy bite, and some homemade pickles. I still have a few left from a pickle video I did, I don't know, almost a month ago I think it was. Finally, we can top these. There we go. Barbecue beef sliders. Small investment of time, but it's worth it because looking at these and smelling them, I know it's time to taste. This may be slightly messy biting in, but you know what? Embrace the sauce face. That's what I say. Here we go. That is so good. Everything from the rub to the smoke to just that natural, great beefy flavor. A little bit of barbecue sauce there at the end to just turn it into barbecue beef. This is a winner. Can I eat all three?